Greetings, let's get started with today's class. Today I'm going to talk about the closed loop transfer function and also uh, we would like to uh, talk about the uh, transfer function of a complex system actually with a complex block diagram. Okay, we learned uh, in the previous class this is the block diagram of a closed loop system. Block diagram of a closed loop system. Let's find the transfer function for uh, a closed loop system. <clears throat> How can we say? We learned that for a block diagram, for a single block diagram, with the transfer function, function called g of s or a gain of g of s with the input and output we can write that the output of a system I'm talking about a single block please notice I'm talking about a single block. The output of a system will be equal to g of s, actually the gain of this block, times e of s, input of this block, like that. c of s is equal to g of s times e of s. Okay? Again, we learned that how could we calculate the error signal. This is the error signal. What can we say about the error signal? We can say that E of S is equal to R of S minus the feedback signal B of S, like that. Okay? So, with substituting the E of S into this equation, we can rewrite the C of S in this form. In this form, okay? So, easily using this equation, we can find the transfer function of a closed loop system. Okay? What did we say about the transfer function? We said that the transfer function of each system, actually each linear time invariant system is ratio of Laplace transformed of output as you see here, this is the Laplace transformed of our output in Laplace transformed of input of a system, which is equal to G of S divided by 1 plus G of S times H of S. <clears throat> this is the transfer function of a closed loop system. Okay, which is calculated easily. Now let's talk about the feedback. As you see here, our feedback signal, or B of S, is a negative feedback. As you see here, in the summing point, we write here a negative sign. So it means that our feedback signal is a negative feedback. So we calculated or found the transfer function of a closed loop system. What kind of closed loop system? A closed loop system with a negative feedback. Okay, if we have a positive feedback 
What about the positive feedback? In this case, easily we can find that e of s, the transfer function, will be changed in this form r of s plus b of s, okay? Because we have plus sign here. r of s plus b of s will be equal to error signal. Again, we will have plus sign here and plus sign here and negative sign in the denominator of transfer function. Okay, so please notice to, to the sign of the negative, uh, sign of the feedback if you uh, want to calculate and find the transfer function of a closed loop system. Okay, because the sign of g of s times h of s in the denominator of the transfer function will be changed with changing the sign of the feedback. Okay, let's continue. In this slide, we have two blocks with a transfer function or gain, which is connected in two different forms. This connection is called cascade and this connection is called parallel. We can say that if two block, if two blocks connect together in cascade form, we can replace these two blocks with a single blocks and multiply the transfer function of these blocks and write as a transfer function of a single block. Okay? We, we multiply g of g1 with the g2 and write here as a transfer function of, of a single block. In the case of parallel form, as you see here, again we can draw a single block instead of these two blocks and add the transfer function of these blocks g1 of s plus g2 of s okay it's so important in a block diagram reduction because as i said to you most of the time our systems are complex so our block diagram of such, such systems will be uh, complex. So to calculate and find the transfer function of such system, the, the complex control system, we need to reduce the block diagram, then calculate the transfer function. So these two properties will help us in the block diagram reduction of a system. Okay, here uh, I'm going to talk to show you a complex block diagram as you see here. This is a complex block diagram. We would like to calculate the transfer function of this system. First of all, we have to simplify this block diagram. How can we do that? Let's talk about this block diagram. As you see here, as you see here, easily we can see that if you look at this section of block diagram, okay, we can see that these two blocks are cascade with together, okay? connect with together in cascade form. So, I can say that instead of these two blocks, I draw a one block with this transfer function, with this gain actually, g1 times g2 of s. Okay? So, these two blocks 
What about these two, two blocks? What do you think about these two blocks? Yes, these are parallel. Again, I can write G3 of S plus G4 of S and draw a one block, a single block instead of these two blocks. Again, what do you think about these section of block diagram? If you look at this section, you can find that this is a block diagram of a closed loop system. Yes, we have a feedback here and one block here, input and output. We learned how uh, could we calculate the transfer function of the uh, closed loop system in the previous slide. So easily we can write that g1 times g2 divided by 1 minus g1 g2 h1 of s and this is the block diagram of a um, block of two parallel blocks yes again these two blocks are cascade with multiplying the gain of these two blocks with together we can find the gain of block diagram like that okay easily this is a closed loop system and we learned how can how could we calculate the closed loop transfer function of a closed loop system okay yes now we have a closed loop with a positive feedback okay yeah, yes uh, we can write g of t instead of this block because of simplicity at the end the transfer function of the system actually uh, the, we reduce the block diagram and uh, going to calculate the transfer function g t of s these terms divided by 1 minus g t of s h of s okay easily with simplifying the complex block diagrams we can find the transfer function of uh, every system okay sometimes or most of the times our systems are multi input system actually they have more than one input how can we calculate the response of such system a system with a more than one input how can we calculate the response of such system suppose that I talked about this issue during this course we only investigate the linear time invariant systems okay I'm talking about when I say a control system I'm talking about the linear time invariant control system okay if if our system is a linear time invariant system with more than one input we can say that to calculate the response of such system first of all we can assume that one one of the inputs is equal to zero then we calculate the response the response of system according to one input after that, in the next st step, we assume that the second input is equal to zero. Then we calculate the response of system according to the another input. 
Then we add the, these response with together. Please notice, only we can do this calculation when our system is a linear time invariant system. This model, this method is called superposition. Superposition, actually. And I said here that to calculate the total response, the total response of a system, in the first step, we assume that, as you see here, we have two inputs. The first one is R of S, and the second one is D of S, a disturbance. Uh, I talked about the disturbance and I said that this disturbance is a kind of input in our system because it affect our, affects our system. Okay, first of all we assume that D, this input is equal to zero, okay? We are trying to calculate C of S according to R of S and call C R CR, okay? In the next step, we suppose that R of S is equal to zero, then we calculate CD, the response of the system according to D of S. Then we add these response with together to find the total response of this system with multiple inputs. Okay, let's calculate. First of all, I said that our input R of S is equal to zero. Okay? Our block diagram will be changed in this form. Here we don't have R of S as an input only we have the of s okay suppose that notice that i have written minus h of s as this block why because as you see here the feedback of this system is negative but because we delete the input so we need to delete this summing point also. For this reason, I have to multiply this feedback, this negative sign, to the gain of the feedback. For this reason, I have to write minus in the block diagram of a feedback, okay? So, again, easily, we can find that this system also is a closed loop system. Okay? This is a forward pass input from the output. The pass, I will talk about these uh, terminologies. I will talk about the uh, forward pass. What is the meaning of the forward pass? Uh, I'm saying here the pass which starts with input going through the output is called the forward pass. We have a forward pass and also we have a feedback here, as you see here, okay? So easily we can calculate the transfer function for this system, okay? The transfer function, we learn that how can we calculate the transfer function of a closed loop system like that. In the denominator of the transfer function, we will have the gain of a forward pass, G2. And in the denominator of transfer function, we will have 1 plus the gain of the closed loop system. Okay? Multiplication of the gain of the closed loop system. Okay? This is a closed loop system. G1, G2, and H of S. Okay. So, we have C, D of S here. 
Then in the next step, we suppose that d of s is equal to zero. So we will have r of s. Okay. Here we will have negative feedback. Again, this is a closed loop system. Easily we can find the transfer function for such system. Again, g1, g2, the gain of forward pass in the denominator 1 plus gain of closed loop g1, g2, h of s. Okay? And here we can see that we found the CR, the response to the R of S. Here, the response to the D of S. Okay. Easily, with multiplying the D of S here to the transfer function, we can find the D, C, D of S the response of a system to the disturbance. And from here, with multiplying R of S into the both side of this equation, we can find that CR of S is equal to G1, G2 of S divided by this term times R of S. Okay, now we could find CD and CR again with adding these two response we together we can find the total response of a system what kind of system linear time invariant system okay that's it Thank you so much for watching us, goodbye.